Hey everyone, I'm Rome Will, and uh, this video is all about online auctions and how to buy a home and pay cash for it, get a pretty good deal, pretty good discount through the public auctions. For the purposes of this video, we'll be focusing on the auctions held in Allegheny County. That's in Western Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. We're gonna start off with uh, uh, the actual um, sheriff's website and I'll show you uh, how to find information on how to register for the auctions and I'll walk you through uh, that process. Um, then we'll go through uh, three websites um, that will show you how to perform a preliminary title search. Um, and uh, we'll finish up talking about the, the auction itself and how the auction works, all right? Uh, if you could do me a favor, hit the like button. Um, and if you're interested in, in content related to uh, real estate, um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Um, also share this on your social media um, for others who may be interested in learning how to uh, purchase properties at online auctions. All right, I'm gonna do a quick screen share here. All right, great. So if you go to sheriffalleghanycounty.com forward slash sheriff sale here in the browser see that that will take you to the allegheny county sheriff's website okay now this website is not always up to date so for example in this banner here it says the next sheriff sale is scheduled for monday april 5th uh today uh we are actually in may so they haven't updated that. Um, this party is up to date here, talking about upcoming uh, firearm and real estate sale on May 31st. That's closed, that's up to date. Um, and it looks like the rest of it is, but just be careful with the information on this site. Trust but verify, right? Okay, um, when you scroll all the way down, uh, you actually see where the sheriff sale the auctions are published in the pittsburgh gazette and the pittsburgh legal journal by law they have to uh, publish when they're going to uh, sell a property and you'll also see sale results from previous auctions um, and previous postponements as well as the current sale listings and some um, postponements now the auction was just about a week ago the most recent one they're held on Mondays. I believe it is the first Monday of the month. Um, so they still have the old listings up, um, last I checked, uh, but they'll be updating those, you know, sometime this month for June. If you want to register for the auction, you actually have to do that. Let's see if we can find it. I'm not sure if it's, on this main page here we're gonna look here it is yes it is here um it's kind of in the fine print here it says please fill out all the forms on the bidder registration form we'll click on that and yeah there's no bidder registration form so this is what happens when uh you're dealing with uh public agencies um um, sometimes you're going to have these type of issues where there's discrepancies and uh, when you do register, uh, the way it works, at least for me, the way it worked is once you register, they're going to issue you a number. That number is your bidder number. It's a four digit number and you're going to use it anytime you're bidding. Unfortunately, um, they also ask for your ID, but they don't do it up front. Um, the sheriff's office actually asks for your ID after they issue the bidding number. So don't confuse receiving your bidding number with actually being able to enter the auction. Until you confirm with them that they received your identification, uh, you're not actually registered to enter the auction. It's not gonna be fun when you go to, to the morning of the auction and you're not, and you don't have the invite in your email and you're calling and you're trying to get in the auction and they're saying no they're not going to let you in so after you receive that number after you send them a copy of your id call them make sure that they receive a copy of your id uh, because if they claim that they did not receive that they will not let you into the auction i am going to show you guys um three websites here that uh, i use when 
I'm researching properties. And the first one is this www2, kind of weird, right? www.alleghenycounty.us forward slash real estate search. This will allow you to take an address and find a parcel number using that address. Okay, so we're gonna put in um, um, an address that was from the previous auction. And it's going to be, as you can see, when you type it in, you got some options that come up here. So it's 355 Idlewood. And when I hit search, I'm gonna get a lot of information, including this parcel ID number, which is very important. The numbers that are important in the parcel ID, in this case, are gonna be 539-C-371. A lot of the zeros don't mean anything. I found out, but uh, some of these numbers do actually mean something. We're gonna use that later on. Um, also note the different names of owners listed here, the current owners. So in this case, you have these folks with the last name Kudri, and then there are different names listed. Um, whenever you see multiple of anything, when you're trying to do a title search, you're gonna have to search across all of those to make sure that your search is complete. Um, it, this site will give you uh, quite a bit of information. Do you trust all of it? Uh, I would not trust everything. Um, take it with a grain of salt, but it does give you a good starting point. Building information will tell you a little bit more about the building as far as the public record. So in this case, this address, they're saying there's 1,700, a little bit over 1,700 square feet of living space, and that was built in 1948 that it has three bedrooms, one full bath and a half bath, and that it also has a full basement. That's what the property record says, according to the Allegheny County Real Estate Portal. There's also some tax information here. I recently learned that this is specifically Allegheny County taxes. This may not include school taxes or city taxes or any other liens, okay? These numbers are not necessarily up to date. They give you an idea of if the taxes were paid or not recently, but they are not necessarily up to date. Again, take this with a grain of salt. You also get the owner history. So it will show you in this case that the house was purchased in 1950 and the sell price, interestingly enough, was $0. And then in 2004, uh, Daniel Kudry, uh, he bought it for $50,000. We're going to now try to take that information and use it to confirm additional information. The next website we're gonna use is this one, the dcr.alleghenycounty.us. And once you're here, you can search, you can do a case search, okay? And you can search by a court case, but in this case, we wanna look at the block or lot number. Okay, we'll go back to looking at the court case a little bit later. Now, if we scroll back, that number was 539C371. We'll type that in here. 539, the letter C, 371. We'll go search. And lo and behold, we have all these records that come up. These records are associated with that one property. Okay, that's why I wanted to find out what the parcel number or the block or the lot number, they're all the same thing. I wanted to find out what it was uh, because if you search by anything else, maybe someone owns multiple properties or over their, their, their lifetime have owned multiple properties and uh, that can kind of confuse you. So here we're just looking at any liens related to uh, this particular property. So you can sort this by filing date. Now be careful because sometimes it mixes up 2000, the year 2000 for some reason it doesn't sort correctly. But we can go way back. It looks like there are 29 rows of information here. And if you, if you notice, it'll tell you um, which type of liens. So if it was an Allegheny County tax lien, or if it just says Cy Foster tax lien, um, there might be like in this case it's township tax lien these different amounts show how much was owed at that time based on that legal action and it shows you what tax year that was referencing so this can get really confusing um, if you do get really confused you can always pay 
for a professional title search. This is just your way to see if there are any, uh, at a glance, if there are any title issues. We know that there are some liens or some issues with the property. Um, what you can do is if you're still really interested in this property um, and you really want to buy it, one of the things you can do is wait for it to be sold free and clear. If it is sold, if it is sold free and clear, then that means that the county and whoever else, they consolidated the liens down to uh, one amount. It's usually a lower amount than all the totals, uh, previous totals combined, and they start the bidding at that lower amount. The free and clear is sometimes the way to go if there are issues or discrepancies or problems you think you might have with the title you may want to wait until the property is offered free and clear before you bid on it the third side i want to show you uh, if you're looking at properties that may have a mortgage um, you can go to this site pa underscore allegheny.uslandrecords.com and this site you have to pay to uh, actually see the record but when you go to this site and you sign in and uh set up your credit card uh, you can then go in and click on office mortgages and then type a last name in this case we'll go to uh, Kudri. okay and there's a date range here we'll go to today's date and we'll go search now Th some of these sites they work better with um, with Internet Explorer so I would recommend you use Internet Explorer um, but for now since I don't have to actually click on these, they're working just fine in Chrome, but none of the names came up that matched the uh, Daniel Kudry or Mary Kudry. So, uh, you know, you can go in and you can pay to look at these in more detail, or you can make an assumption, um, however safe that may be, that there's no existing mortgage on this property. So those three sites are really helpful. Um, of course, you're not gonna go and search every single uh, property and I'm going to show you how to whittle down the properties that you are interested in. So we're going back to that sheriff sale site. We'll go to sell listings and I'll show you how to read this document. So first off, this is last month's. Okay. So there are 13 total pages. Each page has quite a few items on it. Okay. But I'll show you how to read this. We'll go to page one down at the bottom it will show you the report date. So this is the date and time stamp of when the sheriff's deputies um, ordered this report and they published it based on that date and time stamp. This one was released right before the auction. The weekend before the option, auction, usually like Thursday or Friday, they'll post the latest list. So even if you're working off of an older list, um, you'll wanna go back and check. Why? Because here there's a column called sales status. And it's gonna tell you if active, if it's active, if they're planning to go to auction with it, or if it's been postponed or stayed. So we'll scroll down, we're on page two, we're scrolling down to page three. Here, the auction number, the property number is 014 May 21. It has the case number here. In case you wanna use that website I showed you to look things up by case number, you can do so there. It actually comes in handy sometimes. And it's saying that this is a tax lien. This is the attorney here. The attorney name is Jinko. It shows you the address here. This is 4213 School Street in Homestead, Pennsylvania, which is in Allegheny County. And um, it's going to show you that there are some taxes owed here, these two columns. But what we're interested in right now is that it's been postponed. So if previously you had did a lot of research on this property, you were interested in this particular property, guess what? You're probably not going to be able to bid on it this upcoming month. Um, that doesn't mean that you won't be able to bid on it, but it could have been postponed for a number of reasons. Maybe some paperwork wasn't turned in by the attorneys. Uh, don't worry about it too much. Don't stress about it. You should have a few different houses that you're interested in bidding on anyway. And you know, there's always next month. There's always next time. Now, if a property is stayed, Let's see if we can find one on this list. Aha, we found one. 1935 Main Street in Pittsburgh. Uh, this property was stayed. That means that there, the judge decided that uh, something had happened to where he didn't want it to move forward. It could have been a bankruptcy. It could have been that someone paid off the amount. It looks like here, 
um, they may have made a significant payment if not paying off the entire amount owed. So that property is no longer up for auction, it was stayed. These numbers here off to the side, the SVS 3129 and OK, don't worry about those. Those are related to um, like the workflow for the attorneys is my understanding. So these attorneys, um, they handle a, a, por a different, you know, por a portfolio of properties um, that uh, are going through the court system. And they are on the call during the auction representing um, the lenders or representing the county at times. Uh, you'll hear the term plaintiff. That means that's the attorney that's representing the county or the attorney that's representing a lender. And there are, you know, in this case, like we're looking at this one, 31 May 21, this is a mortgage foreclosure. So this attorney, Mr. Friedman, is representing US Bank Trust National Association in this matter. Um, real quick side note, um, difference between the liens, different type of liens. My understanding is there's the tax liens where taxes are owed. And then there's the mortgage foreclosures where uh, someone foreclosed on their mortgage. They weren't making the payments. And now the house is the lender is trying to sell the house um, and, and, and get their money back. In the case of the mortgage foreclosures, there's this concept called the upset price. The upset price is basically the price that's still owed on the mortgage. So in this case, Mr. Friedman here, that attorney, he's not going to allow you to underbid the upset price. So he knows what the upset price is and maybe the uh, sheriff's deputy um, holding the auction does. But, you know, you kind of know what it is if you do, if you pay attention and use those websites that I showed you and you pay attention to what's posted in the newspapers and you pay attention to what's posted here under cost tax and cost, you kind of have an idea what that mortgage is anyway, how much is owed. And so don't expect that you're going to get a house there where there's, a, you know, $200,000 owed on the mortgage. You're not going to get it for $20,000. What's going to happen is the bidding's going to start low and that attorney is going to keep, as people are bidding, the attorney is going to keep a bidding and you're going to bid and the attorney is going to bid and then someone else is going to bid. And finally, the attorney will bid for the exact amount of the mortgage. He'll say $286,000, $286, $321.09. And that's when you know that he hit the upset price. So that means we were creeping up, creeping up to that upset price. He's gonna, he's gonna then just say, okay, this is how much it is. Um, the bank is gonna bid on their own property, basically, uh, which is, you know, kind of a joke. But, you know, they do it to drive up the price. And then anything over that, then now the real bidding begins. Me personally, I've been avoiding the mortgage foreclosures because um, not only are the prices a lot higher, you're paying off someone else's mortgage. Um, but that doesn't mean there aren't other liens on the properties. I tend to focus on the ones that are free and clear. If you're going to do a search, if you find properties that you think are interesting, well, first of all, how would you even know? Well, you take the address. So in this case, let's look at this one. It's 25 May 21. Okay. Let's say it's 141 Fremont Street. All you got to do is go into your browser and put 141 Fremont Street. And just put Pittsburgh in this case. It doesn't have to be the exact location. You can put Pittsburgh and it should show up. And you want to, you know, double check. In this case, it's Mount Oliver. Let's go back to our bid list. Yep, the jurisdiction is Mount Oliver. So we know that this is that property right here. It actually has a little bit of a street view here. But you can go on like Zillow or Realtor.com and kind of get an idea of what the house looks like. A lot of times the pictures aren't super helpful, but you know, in this case on Zillow, it's saying it's a three bed, one bath at 1188 square feet. There's a, a estimate there of what it what the house is worth. You know, be careful with the estimates. Things are often um, not very accurate. The unpaid balance, that may not be accurate. Really, you're just going through here as a first pass to see if you're interested in the property because that list, the bid list, I'm gonna switch to it real quick. It doesn't tell you anything about the property. It doesn't tell you um, anything as far as like how big the property is. I mean, you're gonna wanna go to Zillow. You're gonna wanna go to realtor.com or you can go to this real estate site I showed you earlier, the www.alleghanycounty.us forward slash real estate. And this one's pretty good. You type in that address and you're gonna find all kind of information. And this is directly from um, the county's record that they that they put into the electronic system. 
So you can go to Zillow if that's more comfortable to you. But if you notice there's a theme here, we like to check our information. We like to verify in layers. It's hard to know if, if one uh, website has accurate information. It's better to have uh, more information than less. And of course, you know, if you can, it's always wise to drive by these places and take a look. That property that I told you about earlier, 355 Idlewood. When you drive by, you look at the front of the house, uh, not too bad. But as soon as you walk around the back, there's a big old hole um, in the wall in the back in the brick. So someone, I think, tried to maybe put in a um, maybe a sliding glass door or something or wanted to put an entryway. And they just threw up their hands at the end of the day and said, nah, never mind <laughs> and never finished doing it. So um, that's a repair that we would be on the hook for if we had bid and won the bid. Um, but what if we didn't know that? So it's good to go to the properties, get a good look at the property. A lot of times the stairs are walking up on the property, like the stairs are all cracked and stuff. And these Zillow pictures, they're not going to tell you that. You need to go to the property and look if you want to really know what you're bidding on. Just be careful. Some of the properties are owner occupied, they're tenant occupied. Um, you may be trespassing if you're walking around in somebody's backyard. But if it's vacant, you know, if it were me, I'd walk up to it. I'd look through the windows, try to get as much information as possible about the property. It's Monday morning, um, it's 8.30 in the morning. You have your, your laptop open. You don't wanna do this from your phone. You have your laptop open. Um, you have received an invite from the Sheriff's Department. You click on that link. Hopefully you've already set up your Microsoft Teams app. It, it it's all runs through Microsoft Teams. You have your Microsoft Teams app up and running. You're, you're all logged in. Um, you're just kind of waiting. Um, the auction is going to, you want to get in there early uh, because it's first come first serve. There's only so much room in that Microsoft Teams and there are thousands of people on this auction list. So you want uh, not, that doesn't mean all of them are going to show up for that month's auction, but there are thousands of people registered for these auctions. So now that you're in the auction, you're kind of hanging out. The first 30 minutes is probably going to be some legal mumbo jumbo probably doesn't apply to you, but try to pay attention if you can. Once the auction starts, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to go through a list, all those lists that we saw. They're going to go through the postponed list and the sales list, and the attorneys are going to get an opportunity to confirm that things are indeed postponed or stayed. And then some of those that said active, they're actually going to postpone or stay them right there on the spot. There's new information that came forward. It wasn't on the list the previous week. Guess what? You might have wanted to bid on two or three houses. They're not available that week. Uh, they may have been postponed or stayed. So pay very close attention. Uh, you're gonna want to maybe take notes or if you have your list printed out of the ones that you're interested in and you have them highlighted, follow along, listen closely. The key is preparation, 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 but also listening. You have to pay attention. Your attention span has to be on point during these auctions. This is, uh, you're dealing with the sheriff's department. The sheriff's deputies have a very short attention span and a uh, very like short fuse. They don't really care to answer questions at all. So you gotta come prepared. You have to know what some of these legal terms mean. That's why I've been trying to help you with what postpone mean, what stay mean. Um, you know, me, I call the attorneys and I ask them questions and that's why I'm able to tell you what I know now. Um, and you can always go down to the county courthouse and ask questions, uh, excuse me, not. I guess you can go to the courthouse, but I meant to say the county like real estate office, you can go down and ask questions. Um, definitely call and get prepared well ahead of time. But when you're in these auctions, you gotta pay attention because things move really fast. And you'll be listening for things like free and clear. So if they announce your property, hey, 014 May 21, they're gonna have a slide deck up there and um, you're gonna see your property's address. You're gonna see the number. But if you don't see where it says free and clear, guess what? It's not probably not free and clear. And you have to listen because the sheriff's deputy, she's going to tell you, no, this property is not being sold free and clear. But maybe you're prepared. Maybe you know what the liens are on the property. You have an idea how much is owed on the property. Um, and then you can make an educated decision. Sometimes that's a good thing. Um, if you understand how the free and clear versus not free and clear works, then which honestly, I don't know. I think free and clear is a safer bet. But if you know how those non-free and clear properties work and you, or you've done a title search, you paid for a professional title search, you just, you're really on the ball. Sometimes you won't get as much competition on one of those houses because most people like me are waiting for the free and clear properties to pop up.
Um, so there's just a few different things you can do to make yourself more competitive. Just because your property wasn't, you know, up for auction this time around, you know, maybe wait till the next month. Uh, don't let your money burn a hole in your pocket. Wait till the next month. And then it, it may be available. A lot of times the attorneys will actually say, uh, hey, can we um, hold off for 30 days, 60 days or 90 days? So they'll tell you or give you a hint as to when the next time that property is going to be up for sale. OK. Um, wow. I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, this is a 30 minute video. I think uh, I've covered most of it, uh, most of what I, I, I know and what I want to share with you today. Um, again uh please like and subscribe and share this video if it's uh beneficial or you think it'll benefit somebody else i uh, appreciate it if you have any questions for me you can reach me on instagram my instagram is the real rome will and that's separated by underscores the underscore real underscore rome underscore will okay um but yeah that's pretty much it. Oh, there is one more thing uh, related to the auctions and I'm surprised I forgot this, um, but it's not like this isn't something that you can read in the FAQs or, you know, it's all this information is published. You just gotta go find it. But there's a, a very specific way uh, that you have to enter your bid. You have to enter your bid, your number, your registration number first. So your registration number is, let's say one, two, three, four. That's your number as a bidder then you put a space dash space and then the amount that you want to bid so one two three four space dash space nine thousand one hundred dollars and that's pretty much it and if you want to you can actually uh copy that template so that you're not always having to type that out over and over again so if you're in the middle of a little bit of a bidding war with somebody uh you can just hit Control v and it'll paste that part and then you can put in the uh, number that you want to bid, the amount that you want to bid. Uh, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> if it doesn't, reach out to me on Instagram. You can uh, direct message me and we can talk about it. Again, my Instagram is the real Rome will, and that's all separated by underscores. All right. Uh, like, subscribe, share. Hey, thanks everybody. Uh, I hope this was beneficial to you. Uh, wishing you all life health, liberty, wisdom, love, prosperity, and peace.